What's up guys, um, back out of here with another video today. Um, this will be our third episode for our NASCAR Heat 3 season. Today will be Trucks and Xfinity Series at Atlanta. Now, um, going into qualifying here in the Truck um, Series, I did, like, I knew Heat NASCAR Heat 3 does not handle the same as Heat 4 or Heat 5, so I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, but I did know that Obviously, you can run full throttle here at Atlanta if you're in the right line. So, took that in consideration here, but not that good of a lap. 18th for qualifying here um, at Atlanta. I was pretty disappointed with myself. I thought I'd give you a way better lap, but um, Noah Gregson, who actually had some problems in the truck race, would get pulled by about six thousandths. So, uh, that's good for him. For the act Here we are for the active pest control 200 here. As Brett Moffat failed tech inspection, no Gregson obviously got pole. And yeah, that was all like the race, all of like the race stories you could say. But hopping into the race here, um, you know, I kind of just trucked it on the bottom lane. I didn't really, again, I didn't really practice for this race at all. No, I, I just tried to bid and practice for this race at all, actually. Um, and that. That could hurt me entering this race. That could have hurt me entering this race, but I didn't worry too much about it, as we were actually getting pretty good progress here, um, as we we're getting up the inside of uh, Tanner Thorson, making it three wide for that 13th position. But um, Corbin Forrester, yeah, I think so, uh, will end up getting past me here. Um, this was a little bit more of a Cra crazy beginning to the race than, more than Daytona, but man, we were moving up positions here, and I was actually pretty impressed with myself here, and I thought maybe I could string up a top 10, but we kind of stalled out um, in the last few laps, and then here we actually almost spit on the apron, and then we spit on the other banking right here, that I'm surprised, what a save as, um, but we fall back to dead last. Uh, that was a very stupid mistake and bonehead to move by me. As we're all the way back in dead last now and had to gain up some sort of ground. And these, this is a 13% truck race and we're on lap 4 when we, sp we almost spun. So, I mean, we didn't really have that much time. Otherwise, from pit stops where maybe we could pull off some tragedy here. But we'll end up catching um, McLaughlin. And for the Nice in the Nice Motorsports truck, I did not know Nice Motorsports at one point had like the 38 truck. Yeah, I did, I did not know that at one point. That at one point it was like that. But here is where I thought the inside outside could actually work, as we kind of you can see at the end of it there. We pass McLaughlin on the outside. We can end up catching to up to Timothy Peters and Haley Deegan, and then I. Again, I'm I'm seeing more and more that the outside might actually be the preferred lane here. As we're moving, we're just zooming right now. I knew we had a fast truck. We were, were we were almost in the top ten before we um, almost spun. So I know I could probably rally back. I didn't know with how kind of the field was spread out that I'd be able to get all the way up to around tenth. But we're making pretty good ground up right now. We only had nine laps to go, but we did have four laps on fuel. So pit stops. We're soon to come here. You know, also, guys, um, for Na some updates on NASCAR 21, as you guys see these highlights, um, we will be doing uh, a career mode series on it and stuff like that. And we'll, and when NASCAR 21 comes out, maybe for a few days, this will be put to a halt, but I want to finish this, so I'm probably not going to completely end it here. But, um, again, we're just moving up positions here. Got past Nemechek, now we're moving up to Chris Fontaine. And pit stops, we're almost here as uh, we had around two laps on fuel as we skipped here. And we actually go three wide with uh, Josh Rayum and Chris Fontaine. What a move. And I'll actually pass both of them. Even clearing Rayum here out of four and clearing Fontaine. We hit one lap on fuel and I decided myself I'm obviously going to be pitting this time. As other guys were coming into the pits too, um, guys like Harrison Burton and which would include me. Now I didn't know how the AI would enter the pits. They actually enter it like this, and I decide to, I get very loose and I will spin, 
And then I just take this opportunity. I'm like, oh, this, I can easily gain a bunch of positions out of this. And then I get loose entering uh, the pits again. So that was a, like, I guess a chaotic pit entry, you could say there. As we actually end up getting a pit stop, I only took right side tires, I believe. Uh, enough to get me to the end of this race. We come out, though. We were in 28th. Not that good. I guess they all had a different strategy than me. But we were coming to four laps. God, I decided to merge a little bit early here since no one was really in sight. Um, but I will also gain some time out of this again. This is some way you can kind of take advantage of the AI, which I won't try to do too much. I don't want to, like, completely use a bunch of glitches and stuff to win races and stuff, obviously. So, um, don't expect to see that so much, hopefully, here. As, um, again, I knew we had probably a top 10 truck. So, I was just moving right now. As we get past Ryan Vargas here on the outside lane, as we're even passing guys coming off the pit road, so... We moved up to about 26. As Timothy Peters is actually having trouble. He's going off pace here at Atlanta. I didn't really know why, but there was no caution for it. So we're just going to move along here as we get to the outside of Haley Deegan. And yeah, really the most of the rest of this was just me passing cars I would end up getting to. As we're on, we're, we have three laps to go coming to two. And we were in 21st. We were just trying to catch that pack up there. As there's another car entering the pits, that is Clay Greenfield. He's having some trouble. But that wouldn't gain us a position. He was actually in 31st. So, two laps to go. I didn't really know if we could catch the, the guys up there, like uh, Bailey Curry, I believe. And, yeah, we were 18 seconds behind the leader. And on the final lap, we just did not have enough for Curry. We caught up. If we had one more lap, maybe we could have got him. But... At the end of the day, it obviously would not be enough here as we will come home for a 21st place here at Atlanta. That was not so good, but if we didn't spend that, definitely probably would have been a top 10. But um, here's some of the highlights for the race before we get to the results. Guys like Jordan Anderson here. There was no cautions this race, caution free, so it wasn't really much highlights to show, really. But here's the results. That was Max McLaughlin, by the way. As Grant Infinger actually ends up getting the dub here at Atlanta so um pretty good set, a pretty good race for him obviously as Ben Rhodes had the fastest lap No Gregson had the most laps led with 11 out of 17 that's over half the race and Brent Moffitt on the move started dead last finished 11th and Clay Greenfield started 13th finished 31st tough break for him as we actually fall down to 12th in the truck standings which we'll show at the beginning of the next episode, which will be Cup at Atlanta. But here's the Xfinity standings um, entering this race here, which was obviously at Atlanta. And next next race for all series will be Las Vegas. Well, next week, you could say. Well, you get the idea. Um, but as we head into qualifying here at Atlanta, I hadn't really... Also, you might hear my voice in the background here. That's because I guess I didn't have my mic unmuted for... I didn't have my mic muted. And, you know, I got I kind of got bored, you know. I was just talking to myself and stuff, just saying stuff. Kind of commentating the race, you could say, for some reason. Uh, but we don't have a good, like, a good qualifying session at all here at Atlanta's Cas Grala in... Who, whoever that was um, actually tied for the pole. They had the exact same lap time. Yeah, him and John Hunter Nemechek. They had the exact same lap time. And they just gave it to Gorilla. I guess in a way of repaying him for flipping at Daytona. I don't really know why else they would give him the pole there. In IRL, if, in real life, if that ever happened, I think they would just do a tiebreaker between like wins or average finish or something. I don't really know how that ended up happening here, but we're green here at Atlanta as we actually get a pretty good start here. Um, 21 lap race. And yeah, but we don't really get to go in here on the outside lane in turns one and two. 
as um, Ryan Sieg and that um, Lombard Bros Gaming uh, car. I would obviously, if you know, you know who he's who that sponsor is about and stuff. We're not going to really talk about it anymore. Past that, but we actually get into the wall a little bit. This I noticed this car was a little bit tight, tight more tighter than I expected heading into this race. As you can see, we actually almost get into the wall again here. This is not a good start of the race for us. We have fallen back five positions from where we qualified. But we actually gained some time. I, I, I learned from the truck race that the outside lane could actually work here. As um, we move on to where I actually get down to the bottom lane. And start pushing Ty Dillon in that three car. It's kind of... It's kind of cool seeing all these cars I remember watching a few years ago in the Xfinity series, like Ty Dillon and the 3, all the Flex Seal and Flex Tape and all those cars, which are still here today, really, but, you know, that was when they were first made, I guess, popular, you could say. Um, but, um, we kind of pushed Ty Dillon, he goes up ahead, and that, and that car that is in the lead by a good amount, that is Tyler Reddick. He started dominating the early parts of this race. As Dale Earnhardt Jr., who started 10th, uh, ends up falling back here to 20th as we get to the inside of Ryan Sieg and eventually pass him. We're actually going to hit the the left uh, front of quarter, left front, I don't know, whatever of Junebug. And we hit 16 laps to go. Now, um, we also get to the inside of Ty Dillon here. But he's going to end up clearing us. As we move on around here, we'll actually get three wide, send it three wide, you could say, on Dylan Lupton. As Ryan Truex is in the 11, I do not remember that. You know if I watched this season. Um, but, you know, yeah, he's here in the 11. For, I'm guessing, colleague, I'm not sure yet. Um, but here's Kevin Harvin and the Hunt Brothers pizza cars. Kaz Grella, our pole sitter. Uh, and probably the... Well, what's obviously the closest pole in NASCAR, uh, closest qualifying, like, difference for pole ever in NASCAR history. Um, he's falling back, but anyways, we got problems with Ryan Priest in the 18. He smacks the wall, no caution comes out, but then he comes back down in front of the whole field. Well, not the whole field, half the field. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, huge impact for the 15. That was bad. Let's see the in-car view for Ryan Sieg here. Just complete carnage. You can see Kevin Harvick involved. Dale Earnhardt Jr. That was chaotic. I I thought everything was going to be fine, but Ryan Priest just decided to come down. That was pretty bad. But um, we go back green here. And um, we had about 10 laps to go here, and we did not have to pay for the rest of the race. This was literally just a green flag shootout to the end. So I knew I had to go. No playing around with strategy or anything, I had to go. So, um, while you guys see this clip here, I don't, I like, I guess that's our first Kevin LePage, LePage of the season. I mean, Priest was fine. I don't know if he, like, blew a tire or blew two tires or something. I don't really know what happened to him. That was kind of like what happened with Kyle Busch at Daytona. It's like they just shoot up into the wall from blowing an engine or... Well, not blowing an engine. Or maybe. Or blowing a tire or something and no caution comes out. But that actually resulted into the second big one... Well, you can say the third big one in the Xfinity Series season. That Xfinity Series is off to a chaotic start to say. Um, the least here is we hit eight laps to go. As we were actually moving up through the field here, I hit the apron, kind of mess up, but I will end up blocking Ryan C. And end up going three wide on Ty Dillon here. I was just making moves and trying to get a top ten, especially considering our horrific start of the season at Daytona. That ended in a, like, 38th place finish or something. It was terrible. So, um, I actually make a mistake here and hit the side of Ty Dillon. And ping pong kind of gets the best of us there as we shoot into the inside wall. We stay green, obviously, but I do get damage and I fall back to 26. Though, at this point, I was really just frustrated and just, like, going all out at this point. So, um, I end up catching up to the back of, I believe, Josh Williams. And I, I just 
Like, you can see, I'm just pushing it so hard in the corners, and I'll actually end up getting to almost to the outside of Williams. But at the moment, would not quite be enough. Uh, we had four laps to go, and I could see that big pack up there. I didn't really know how to handle it. And then, um, the, I just decided to try to push Williams up to it. Maybe I can make a move from there, but we probably wouldn't end up having that much, um, time, um, to make a move on that pack. I was just really trying to get to, then, uh, trying to pass Josh Williams and Kaz Gurala, really. That was our main goals here. So, um, coming to two laps to go here. I'll, uh, we actually have problems with the f uh, double zero of Cole Custer. He seems to be off pace, and he's going to end up DNFing out of this. Um, but anyways, we hit two to go, and I'll actually get to the inside of Josh Williams entering turns one and two. And um, then our whole goal for the rest of this race was past Kaz Grala here as we hit enter the final lap here. I kind of give him a little bit of a boost by accident exiting turn two. So I just basically send it in on the final corner. And he actually kind of gives me the inside a little bit. I clip his bumper, but it'll be a successful pass on Kaz Grella, which his car is very much damaged. But um, we'll come home 23rd for Atlanta and Xfinity Series, which is not bad considering how Daytona went. Ryan Freese and Cole Cusher were your two DNFs. Daniel Hemrick ends up winning the race. So, that was a shocker to me, because Tyler Reddick was, like, dominating before that caution came out. Uh, we end up moving up to 32nd in the standings. Tyler Reddick had the most laps led with 11. And, um, Garrett Smithley was on the move. Started 26th, finished 8th. And Cole Custer started 7th.